Well, here we are plugging away on the endocrine system. And you know that means some substance is released. We call them hormones, and it goes someplace in the body. So for this lesson, I'm calling it the endocrine heart. Now, we've already done the heart in this series in the past. We did cardiovascular system earlier. Well, let's take a look at the heart. I just want to refresh your memory about what it mainly does and then uh, this new concept about it releasing a hormone. Let's look at our heart. Oh, that's not the heart I wanted. I guess that is a cat heart, but it's a heart made by two cats. That's cute, but I wanted to show you a real cat heart. Here's one, <clears throat> and I'll point out a few things you know the bottom of the heart, the more caudal area of the heart, is really kind of in a point, and it's called the apex, A-P-E-X. So that's kind of an orientation. And you know in the real heart, all the plumbing pipes are coming out the top. We've talked about that before. So this is a cat heart. Uh, it, in the report, it was said it weighed about 22 grams. So there's one thing I want to point out. There's an abnormal part to this heart, and this is a very much dilated left atrium. Now, if you remember the heart anatomy, there's a left atrium and a right atrium. Well, I re I, the reason I show you this is this is a cat heart, and all, the, all our pets release this hormone, the mammals at least. And this hormone comes from the atria because that's plural, right? A-T-R-I-A. Atria means both the left and right atrium. Uh, anyway, this is abnormal, but it makes the point that this hormone we're going to talk about comes from this area. Okay, so here we go. We're going to talk about the hormone released by the heart. Well, in endocrinology, you should know there's probably multiple names for almost any compound, any hormone. Here's the first one I want to talk about, atrial peptin. Atrial refers to the atria of the heart. Peptin means it's an amino acid. It's a hormone made by a string of amino acids. It happens to be 28 amino acids long. Okay, here's another name. This name is atrial natriuretic peptide, often abbreviated ANP. It can also be called atrial natriuretic factor, AMF, okay. We said it's made by heart tissue, and in this case, it's made by the myocytes of the atria of the heart, right? There's a left and right atria, and these cells release atrial peptin when the atria are stretched, and when it's stretched, it's stretched due to a increased blood volume, okay? So when the heart senses too much fluid in the blood, then it releases atrial peptin. The main target tissue of this hormone is the kidney. And we're gonna talk about what it does at the kidney. And I should also say it's a vasodilator. So it's gonna dilate blood vessels of the body and if you realize, if you make all the pipes in the plumbing have an increased diameter, that would automatically lower blood pressure, okay? So now I want to talk about the main action on the kidney. Okay, here we are. I'm going to show somebody's nice drawing from an article from, look at it, it's 1992, but the kidney has not changed since then, so I can use this diagram. Here's the heart, we'll say it's the feline heart, could be the dog heart, could be the horse heart. Releases this peptide hormone when it gets stretched, remember that. Atria gets stretched, atrial peptin gets released. Its main target tissue is the kidney, and that's what this part of the diagram depicts. It depicts a nephron in the kidney, and there's millions of those. Nephrons filter blood, and when things get filtered out of the blood, they end up here, starting out in what I would call the crude urine. All those little dots could be glucose, could be sodium, whatever. But most things don't end up in the urine. They're reabsorbed, and when something is reabsorbed, like let's say glucose, it's taken from here through 
the wall of the nephron back into the blood. There's blood vessels all over here. That's called reabsorption. Well, this hormone prevents reabsorption of sodium. See how the slash there, normally sodium would come back into the blood. But now with atrial peptin, the sodium, more of the sodium is going to stay in the urine and end up being voided or excreted. If sodium stays here, so does water. So we're going to end up increasing the volume of urine because of this hormone and then that would automatically decrease blood volume and then that would decrease blood pressure. And of course I have to have another diagram because I really really believe that the more diagrams and pictures and uh, figures you look out look at the better you'll understand something. So here's my final diagram here. Uh, we've got the heart and this person is showing more than one target tissue, like I alluded to earlier. So let's look at this. Atrial peptin. Actually, they're saying it might even inhibit cell growth. I'm not going to really concentrate on that. But it, atrial peptin is released by the atria of the heart when it's stretched. And it goes in the blood and travels all through the body. And there are target tissues. Here, it says in the brain, it might decrease the cat's love for salt salt water appetite salt goes down the craving for salt remember we've got too much blood that initiated this okay then the main thing we want to look at of course is the kidney this drawing is a little different than the last one they showed the nephron in the last previous figure i used here they're just showing a kidney of course you know that's the adrenal gland on top there probably not a true picture for the cat but Here's the action of atrial peptin on the kidney. Natriuresis, that means I'm going to waste sodium. I'm going to put sodium in the urine more than usual. Diuresis, that means water wasting, right? If you've ever heard of somebody getting an animal or a person getting a diuretic, that means that person or animal is going to make more urine. And when you make more urine, that volume is coming directly out of the blood because urine is fluid that used to be in the blood. I won't talk about renin inhibition until later when we talk about kidney function. Here's another uh, arrow going to blood vessels. And I said earlier that atrial peptin also causes vasodilation. And that means you're going to get a bigger pipe and that's going to also lower blood pressure. Thanks a lot.